The Whistler 101 Sessions, a series that seeks to inform, educate, and inspire. Whistler 101, what do you know? Hi, I'm Mo Douglas, the Executive Director at Arts Whistler. For the past 30 years, I've had the great fortune to work in Whistler's arts and events community. So let me take you on a little journey through Whistler's dynamic art scene from the early days of the town of Alta Lake to the 2010 Olympic Games to meeting the challenges of a pandemic. The word art covers a lot of ground, but it isn't hard to define. Art is an expression of human creativity and imagination in any form. Given the beauty and emotional power of Whistler's natural environment, it's unsurprising that the town has always been vibrant, fun, irreverent, and boundlessly creative. The basic ingredients of art. Whistler draws adventurous people, seekers of the perfect powder run or epic mountain bike trail. Yet the idea of taking on an adventure in the arts, whether it's painting, playing in a band, or acting on stage, can create more fear than dropping into a double black diamond in a whiteout. But arts and sports are not mutually exclusive, especially here in Whistler. Both reflect a go-for-it spirit of discovery, of facing the unknown, of expressing yourself. Chili Tom, one of Whistler's favorite and most iconic artists, said it best when he asked, what could we create if we just feared less? The evolution of the arts in Whistler can be captured in three phases. Let your freak flag fly, rock hard, play hard, and the sum of the parts. Let's take a look at that first phase. Creating any form of art is an exercise in letting your freak flag fly. But in Whistler, risk-taking, whether on the mountain or off, is a proud part of our history. Whistler brings people together from all over the world, schemers, dreamers, and adventurers, who all share in the secret of how awesome and inspiring this place is. Celebrating this bond together has always been a huge part of our local culture and given the arts community places to shine. From back in the day on Alta Lake with Myrtle and Alex Phillips' Rainbow Lodge, along with Andy and Florence Peterson, and the many more who would plant the seeds of what eventually became Whistler, they all possessed that same go-for-it creative spirit. They didn't have much to work with in those days. They had to make it up for themselves. Theater shows and skits with lots of men in drag, music nights, dances and storytelling, sharing any and all artistic talents. As Whistler life became less about the lake and more about the mountain, a different kind of local started to appear. Young, adventurous, counterculture ski bums. Now the do-it-yourself art scene included jam nights and squatter cabins, selling homemade t-shirts to visiting skiers, creating a rogue newspaper, and simply getting naked as a way to express yourself. The legendary Toad Hall poster features a group of squatters celebrating their last day in the cabin together. Though it just seemed like a fun idea for a photo at the time, it went on to become one of the most iconic images associated with Whistler in the global ski community, displayed in ski resorts and bars all over the world. It's also a great example of artists finding creative ways to earn a living. Chris Speedy and Terry Spence, the guys behind the poster, would sell them in Dusty's Bar for two bucks a shot, keeping themselves in beer money. As the resort grew, more businesses opened to support a growing skier base, inns, stores, and bars, like the legendary Boot Pub. The Boot featured big-name bands who were keen to play this Whistler place they'd been hearing about, Colin James, DOA, Spirit of the West, and the Tragically Hip, to name a few. The Boot hosted another pillar of the early cultural scene. It may have been just a more dignified name for a striptease, but the Boot Ballet was one of the most popular shows in town. As Whistler developed into more of a destination with the addition of Black Home Mountain, more hotels, more jobs, and more of a full-time community, the same people who once spent their evenings at the Boot were settling down, buying homes, getting hitched, and becoming parents. The kind of parents happy to produce creative evenings of irreverent sketches and songs as a fundraiser for the local elementary school. 
the folks responsible for those shows who still live here are very glad that Facebook was not a thing then, and that's all I'm allowed to say. With a growing community and more families, a few locals, including Glenda Bartosh and Joan Risho, formed the Whistler Arts Council in 1982. One of their first projects was to create the Whistler Children's Festival, still going strong some 40 years later. The Arts Council brought more diverse arts opportunities to Whistler, touring bands and theater shows, workshops and support for local artists. As Whistler morphed from a local ski destination to a full-blown resort with year-round residents, the arts sector started to mature. By the 1990s, Whistler saw the rise of homegrown artists and exponential growth in the arts sector. The town was ready to rock hard and play hard. Local visual arts pioneers like Isabel McLaurin started to have their work exhibited and recognized throughout the community. Artists of other stripes appeared, like chronicler of local history, writer, musician, and creative force, Stephen Vogler. Artist, DJ, actor, and filmmaker Chili Tom had a huge impact on the Whistler art scene and beyond. Though he sadly passed in 2016, his legacy is inspiring a new generation of Whistler artists. Bands began popping up like mushrooms. The Hounds of Buskerville, Sweaty Cheddar, the whole damn county, and She Stole My Beer were just the start. Adventure filmmakers like Greg Stump, Christian Bejan, and Jacques Rousseau turned heads and positioned Whistler as a center for adventure films and the athletes who starred in them. Outdoor writers and photographers were also making Whistler their home base. Tourism Whistler began programming street entertainment and music festivals to attract summer visitors. Street performers from all over the globe would arrive for the summer months. And there were music festivals. Oh, were there music festivals? Country and Blues, the Whistler Jazz Festival, the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra on Whistler Mountain, Brass on a Raft at Lost Lake, even Oktoberfest. And eventually, Cornucopia, a food and wine celebration still going strong as a forefront of the food and beverage revolution. Other Whistler creators emerged to share their special brand of wonderful weirdness. DJs like Foxy Moron, Vinyl Ritchie, and Matt the Alien. Creative filmmakers and actors like Angie Nolan arrived with people like Feet Banks, who together with Chili Tom gave us the heavy-hitting horror fest. Money wasn't always there, but there was sheer artistic will and a community ready to support a whole lot of wacky ideas. Early on, community theater had ramped up thanks to the Whistler Players, followed by sassy local theater groups, short skirt, and shows like the Chairlift Review, skits and sketches that all took place on a chairlift. More and more, grassroots forces were literally building the art scene they wanted to see in their community. A unique type of creativity was taking hold in Whistler, independent, out of the box, fiercely proud and collaborative. As the resort grew, Touring bands of the day performed at Buffalo Bills, the GLC, Dusty's, and the Conference Center. Legendary shows with stories that begged the question, were you there when? 1996 saw the kickoff of what soon became an annual springtime ritual. The World Ski and Snowboard Festival cemented Whistler's reputation as a place to play hard and party harder. With a range of on-hill sporting events and live arts that included main stage concerts in the village and an exhibition celebrating young local visual artists, the WSSF quickly became a community and visitor favorite. Over time, arts events like the Pro Photographer Showdown and 72-Hour Filmmaker Showdown eclipsed the popularity of the on-hill events. With more festivals, more opportunity, and more work, the local arts scene became more professional with many making an actual living from their arts-based work. The Arts Council showcased the success of visual artists in an event called Artrageous and continued to support local artists with an annual holiday market. By 2009, the art scene had matured to the point where Whistler was designated a cultural capital of Canada by the federal government. That same year, the Point Artist-Run Centre was created, focused on local, original theatre, music and visual art. The Arts Council took over the Moray Young Arts Centre, which gave the community access to a full-time art gallery and theatre space. Momentum continued to build in the lead-up to the 2010 Olympic and Paralympic Games, with annual events showcasing Whistler's cultural community, culminating with a cultural Olympiad in 2010. 
Whistler's Olympic and Paralympic Arts Festival, Whistler Live, included high-profile professional acts from around the world performing alongside local talent. 2010 was a turning point for Whistler. Hosting the Olympic Games raised the bar for Whistler's art scene and put Whistler squarely in the international spotlight as more than just a mountain destination. The legacies and lessons of the Games resulted in an exponential increase of work in the arts, more funding, more artists calling Whistler home, and more possibilities for everyone in the creative sector. In the summer of 2011, Whistler celebrated the official opening of Whistler Olympic Plaza, a legacy venue from the Games. With the RMOW Summer Live Concert Program in the plaza, it's become a much-loved place to enjoy concerts and performances in a spectacular venue with a heavenly backdrop. Whistler's cultural offerings also expanded with the addition of some world-class facilities. The breathtaking Squamish Lilwak Cultural Centre provided a venue for authentic Indigenous arts, culture and heritage. Nestled in the woods, the stunning O'Dane Art Museum brought a world-class permanent art collection and international traveling exhibitions to Whistler, experiences previously available only in Vancouver. But even as the art sector thrived, awareness of its impressive depth and diversity, as well as participation, still had room to grow. Art Scene, a new booklet promoting community arts offerings in a professional package, helped that growth out and proved to be a game changer, turning heads and increasing participation in arts programs and events. But there was even more to come. In an outdoorsy place like Whistler, it isn't easy to steal the spotlight from snow sports in the winter or mountain biking, hiking and lake life in the summer. So Arts Whistler looked to the final frontier, the autumn. 2016 saw the first edition of Fall for Arts, an umbrella program that included many of Whistler's signature fall festivals, along with new events like Here and Now, a celebration of local music. With public art along pathways, murals under bridges, and local artists featured on street banners, the arts in Whistler had become not just a part of daily life, but essential to diversifying visitor offerings and fostering a more resilient community. Self-guided tour maps were created, suggesting strolls, bike rides, and leisurely drives with an arts, culture, and heritage twist. Perhaps the best way for visitors to appreciate how impressive, vibrant, and diverse Whistler's art scene has become. Indeed, by early 2020, the Whistler community seemed more engaged in arts and culture than ever. Then, COVID-19 showed up. But art has never shied away from adversity, and in fact, feeds on it. As artists and musicians stepped up worldwide to provide online relief to the stress of lockdowns, Whistler's creative sector rallied to do the same by adapting workshops, performances, and entire festivals to online participation. Arts Whistler's most impressive coup was pulling off a COVID-friendly live event. Art on the Lake literally saw bands and artists on barges and docks scattered around Alta Lake where they could be viewed from the water on physically distanced canoes, kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and inflatable rubber duckies. A perfect example of creative necessity, practical innovation, and how impactful the arts can be in lifting spirits and building community. Whistler's art scene has grown into its own unique celebration of its mountain environment, its history, its creativity, and most importantly, its local talent. From visual artists to actors, musicians, artisans, and writers, the arts community continues to grow and diversify toward an exciting future. And if you're trying to find out what it is that flies your freak flag, the arts and Whistler are friendly, inclusive, and accessible to everyone. So come on in.